We welcome the bikes, boats, and bivouacs. We made it to the RV Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. What do you think, Al? We made it. We made it, yeah. Let's go check it out. Where are we at? RV Museum. Elkhart, Indiana. Well, we had the opportunity to visit the RV Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. I'd like to give you my thoughts on this. Now, first, if, uh, if I videotaped the entire museum pieces, uh, this video would be 40 hours long. So I just have selected components of it to give you an idea of what's in there. So the, fir the first thing I want you to know is you can spend a lot of time there. There's a lot to see. And really, um, you know, there's large parking lots around it. So if you're traveling with your rig and you wanna stop there on the way, you can do that. There's, there's parking for it. When you enter the lobby, it is also their store. Uh, so they have t-shirts, sweatshirts, some camping items, cards, that kind of stuff. Once you pay to get in, there are discounts available. Um, the first thing that we noticed was a teardrop camper. Now, teardrop campers have made a comeback. You know, if you think about the R-Pod and the tabs, uh, the 320 and the 400, and even the, the smaller ones, those little campers, are really popular today and the one that's in the lobby is a much earlier model so we wanted to take a look at that and I'll show that to you right now these are really popular the new you ones see a lot of them. Mm -hmm. and like, they still, you, in you still can't get dressed in them no no it's just sleep only <laughs> well unless you're laying down right yeah that wouldn't be too easy I don't even know if that's the right length I guess you can. Too small. Yeah. Is, that, is this a newer one or an old No, this is the, one of the originals. It's, this is a 1945 kit. You know, the RV industry would not be successful without uh, suppliers. And the museum dedicates a portion of their space for you to see the various uh, suppliers that are really instrumental in the success of the RV industry. So, you know, Dometic and Thetford and uh, Lippert, all those, they have a section in there so you can see uh, the component suppliers. I thought that was an important part, so here it is. So one of the things you can see when you're in here is all the suppliers. They have exhibitions of the latest products that are going into the RVs. Thetford. A more cold refrigerator. Lippert components. Of course, they make a lot of the stuff that goes in everybody's RV. Here you can see what Lippert does. It's windows, doors, awnings, mattresses, steps, chassis, leveling, furniture, and the pumps or the motors for your slides came from Lippert, right? Yeah. And here is the Dometic. Toilets, refrigerators, air conditioning. And then my wife, walked the Camino Trail in Spain and Portugal with her sister, brother-in-law, and uh, two nieces. And a friend had gone along of uh, Marie's sister, and that's who Marie roomed with and walked the trail with. And they had found out that I was going to the RV museum, and Lynn had mentioned that her father and grandfather were instrumental in the RV industry out in Indiana and that they had donated one of their early campers to the museum for display. 
And I'm gonna show you that right now. Now I'm re-walked the Camino Trail over in Spain and Portugal with a friend of her sister's and she had mentioned her father had donated his camper to the museum and here it is. And then, you know, when I think about camping in the earlier days, I'd always see those Shastas, those tin cans. Uh, and you can see uh, one of those earlier models in the museum. There's a bunch of them in there. I selected one for the video. And in 2015, Shasta and Winnebago did this retro thing where they pulled out the old designs from back in the day and they manufactured them with current materials. And they had one of the 2015 retro model Shastas in the museum. So here you can see both of them. This is one of the 2015 Shasta Retros. They made a bunch of these to look just like the old ones. They did a really good job sourcing them. They did put LED lights on them. And then in the 60s, as the uh, travel trailer industry really experienced some growth, we start to see the trailers getting larger and uh, adding more amenities. And what was surprising to me is the design and layout of those early trailers are pretty much still the standard today. Take a look. We used to have them like that. Yeah, they had that for a long time. Is that like our uh, old one? Coachman. You got the upper bunk, lower bed with a table, fridge, stove, sink. Could this be a bathroom? Nope, closet. You can see a very nice lounge that folds down with those pieces to make a bed. Closet in there. That'll fold out into another bed. Refrigerator and your stove. And there is your bathroom. Fold, fold out couch. There's your kitchen with your refrigerator. Flip up table. Back here are your beds. And of course, you can't think about travel trailers without at least acknowledging Airstream. Uh, you know, made famous by the astronauts staying in the Airstream trailers when they come back from the moon. Uh, but they have really been influential in the industry and they are a mark of quality and they have some airstreams in the museum. Here's one of them. You follow uh, travel and camping uh, channels on YouTube. Chances are you've probably watched Keep Your Daydream, the KYD channel. Uh, they do a lot with actually with an Airstream and they had recently purchased a bus, a Bluebird bus, and they use that to tour Route 66. And the interior of that bus also is based on Route 66. So uh, this is one of the main reasons I wanted to go to the museum is to see the KYD bus 
and I got there. Here it is. Well, Mark and Trisha, I got to see your bus. Here is the KYD Daydream. Took this down Route 66, and it does have a uh, Route 66 interior in it, which made it perfect for the trip. Glad to see he made it here into the museum. kitchen had a beds in the back check out the bathroom so there's your step-in shower toilet and sink Back in the early 80s, we started to see the Class A motorhomes become much more popular. And a lot of that was due to the Fleetwood Bounder. So the Fleetwood Bounder still today is uh, just an iconic unit. You can recognize them uh, when you see them in the campgrounds. So here's a look at a Fleetwood Bounder. Yeah, yeah. Oh, famous Bounder. Yeah, I think I had a 1989. Yeah, you're... The old bounder. Fold out couch. Kitchen, dinette that would drop down. Microwave, refrigerator. And here's your shower, tub, toilet, and your bedroom. Of course, if we're talking about a Class A motorhome, we can't forget to mention Winnebago. So in the museum is a Winnebago, it's a late 1960s Winnebago and you can go through it and it reminds me of the motorhome that was used to make the movie Leisure Seeker. So uh, you might want to check out that movie. It's called Leisure Seeker uh, if you're into RVing. But here's a look at that Winnebago Class A motorhome. Here's the Winnebago. This thing is awesome. This reminds me of the unit used in a movie. Get the bunk up here. And then GMC decided to put together a front wheel drive Class A motorhome. And these were made in the mid 70s and they have a cult like following. You can still find these units uh, well maintained and um, on the road. You can see them at some of the campgrounds. So I have to show the front wheel drive GMC. These were front wheel drive, so 
the back section is much lower. So all your drive units in up there. And of course we have to consider class C motor homes with the cab over. And I think of Coachman. Uh, and in the late 70s, they made a class C motor home uh, that they named the Leprechaun. And they had one in the museum. So here it is. Got a bathroom, porta potty in the back. A bit of room in the front, and bed up top. And I think the idea for a Class C motorhome came from the truck campers. Uh, and Holiday Rambler made a truck camper. And the nice thing about a truck camper, you put it on your truck and you could still tow your boat. So this was a very appealing way to camp for those folks that also liked and enjoyed boating. Uh, so here is the Holiday Rambler truck camper. I got a truck camper right here. See the bed up top. It's a bathroom here. No kitchen, dinette. You know, and in between the truck camper and the Class C motorhome uh, was a truck camper mounted directly to the chassis. And we see one of those in the museum, probably the precursor to the Class C motorhome that we saw earlier in the video. But here it is. You can see this one's kind of mounted right onto the frame. You got the bed up top, bench seat, bathroom. Cool. And of course, every museum likes to link whatever they have to, you know, movie stars or famous people. And the RV Museum is no different. And they have uh, some campers that Mae West used and also Charles Lindbergh. So I'll put that in right now. The museum also wants you to think about the future and they have a section dedicated to new advancements and prototypes and there was a doozy there. Take a look at this. So in the Go RVing wing is all the new prototypes of the latest stuff. So this is a $2 million prototype. So here is the cockpit. You do have good visibility. Of course it's a glass cockpit. There is their bathroom. Electronic flushing. Toilet, probably a bodet. Let's see. I don't think it's a, it's a very nice shower. Here is the bedroom. Those of you may be restoring an older unit or rig and maybe you're having trouble finding information, they have a really nice library on the second floor that has, you know, the operating manuals, the magazines from the time, uh, all the material that you would probably need to make sure your renovation is done to your liking. 
can be found on that second floor library. Check it out. I'm gonna go check the library upstairs. So on the second floor of the museum is a library with all the original materials, a lot of the original materials and magazines and books related to the RV industry. So if you're having trouble finding something and you need to take a look at it, you could always come up here, find it and take pictures of the pages you need if you're restoring an older camper. It's called the RV and Manufacturer Home uh, Museum and it is the home of the Hall of Fame. And I'll quickly show you those folks that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Once that's done, you can find their picture uh, on the wall on the second floor. And I'll show that to you, but I'll also highlight Ciro from Pennsylvania since that's my home state. So take a look at this. So on the second floor of the museum is their Hall of Fame has pictures of everyone that was notable in the industry. Since we made it to the RV Hall of Fame and Museum, we're gonna put the sticker on. And I think we're gonna put that one right there. There we go. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. It's free, it helps me out a lot. Also ring that bell, you'll be notified every time I put up a new video and give the video a thumbs up, that helps too. But more important than all that, go have some fun out there. Hey, thanks for watching.